Welcome from 3D Render and Beyond to our second tutorial of Back to Basics Cinema 4D. This tutorial will cover modeling techniques, how viewports work, generators and types of displays and viewports. Three-dimensional objects can be created using a wide variety of methods. Many modeling techniques are available. Constructive solid geometry is the easiest technique of all. All objects consist of existing parametric primitives such as cylinders, spheres, cones, etc. Then we have the polygon modeling. This is a classic modeling technique. Various tools are used to create, join, and edit polygons. Although somewhat tedious, this method gives you complete control over the creation of the final object. Let's see some examples of parametric primitives. You can find the parametric primitives here under this icon. Or you can find them under Create Object. And here you have the list of all the parametric primitives. They are called parametric primitives because they are created from mathematical formulae using a number of preset values. This means that primitives have no points or surfaces that you can manipulate. To apply polygon tools, you must first convert the primitive to polygons using the make editable command. On the plus side, parametric means that you can change the parameter values of an object such as height or radius at any time. In this case, we have a cube. And once you select the cube, you can change the parameters of the cube right here in the Attributes Manager. You can change the X, Y, and Z value. Let's see how the viewports work. If you click on this icon, you will have a full screen mode of the perspective viewport. If you click on it again, you will have the four viewports. You can do this on any of the four viewports. If you click on the move icon, you can move the object. On the zoom, you can zoom the object. You can also rotate the object, the view of the object actually. You're not rotating the object. You're only rotating the view of the object. Generators can be used in combination with splines to help you create objects. Splines let you create various types of caps and surfaces. In order to work, they have to have a child object. You can find the generators here, or you can find them under Create Generators. Subdivision surface is the most state-of-the-art modeling technique. Objects consisting of few polygons are subdivided dynamically to create smooth, organic, higher-resolution objects. Sharp edges can also be created using edge weighing. Let's see an example of how you can use a subdivision surface. If you have a cube and make it a child of a subdivision surface, it will automatically round the cube. The number of subdivisions in the editor is what varies the aspect of the object. More subdivisions, the smoother the object will be. Here we can also see different types of display. Display controls how active and inactive objects appear in the viewport. Now, if you choose quick shading with lines, here you can see the subdivision number of the subdivision surface. So, if we increase the number of subdivisions, you can see, you can see it directly here in the viewport. The extrude object extrudes a spline to create an object with depth. The extruded object appears as soon as you drop the spline into the extrude object in the object manager. So let's create a spline. We can draw here in the top view. For the last click, instead of closing the spline, just click on the close spline. Then you drag the spline in the extrude generator. As a default, you can see it gives you 20 centimeters here, but we want to change the height of the object. So we change the central value here, which is the Y value, to 100 centimeters. 
The lathe object rotates a spline about the y-axis of the local axis system of the generator object to generate a surface of revolution. So let's draw a spline that you can find either here where this icon is or under create spline. Let's click on Generators and choose the Lathe Object. The Lathe Object appears as soon as you drop the spline into the Lathe Object in the Object Manager. Usually the profile should lie on the XY plane because it will be rotated about the Y axis. Let's change the display so that we can see how the object is subdivided. Let's choose Quick Shading with Lines. If you want this object to be nice and smooth without having to add points to our spline, we can use the subdivision surface we saw before. As soon as you drag the lathe object under the subdivision surface and make it a child, you have a nice and smooth object. By changing the number of subdivisions here in the editor, your object will be more or less smooth. The loft object stretches a skin over two or more splines. The order of the splines in the loft object determines the sequence in which they are connected. So let's draw a new spline. Let's make a copy of the spline by pressing CTRL and dragging the spline in the Object Manager. Move the spline along the z-axis and then make the two splines children of the loft object. If we switch right now to the points mode, you can count the number of points that make up the spline. You can then change the mesh subdivision to 8 so that you have the same number of subdivisions. We can use again, once again the subdivision surface to make the loft nice and smooth just like a wave. The sweep object requires two or three splines. The first spline, the profile spline, defines the cross section and is swept along the second spline, also known as the path to create the object. Let's copy one of the splines used from the loft object, CTRL, and drag the spline to the top. Let's draw our profile spline, or in this case just use a circle, and you can find it always under the splines icon. We can change the value of the radius right here and make it of 2 centimeters. Make sure to be in the object mode. Drag now both the profile spline and the path spline under the sweeped object in this order. If you zoom up to see the object closer, you can see that we have an excessive number of subdivisions. We can reduce them by changing the intermediate points of the circle to natural with a number of 5. Actually, we can even see that 3 is enough as a number of subdivisions. The spline type can be changed to B-spline to have a smoother path. We can even change this to natural with a number of 3. Thank you for following this tutorial. If you enjoyed, do check out tutorial number 3 that will cover modeling objects and deformer objects. Follow our Facebook page for news and updates.